Hey you guys, welcome and welcome back to Mom Jeans by Nutcase. It is yours truly, the Nutcase Case Nicole, back again with more shenanigans. And we are here to do another Love is Blind Season 6 Couples Breakdown, okay? And this time, I gotta break down Kenneth and Brittany because they didn't make it past the living together stage. However, I feel like it's important to talk about a few things that went down in their connection and a few of the factors that I feel like played a role with this their ultimate demise. So you guys be sure to get in the comments. Let me know what you think about my commentary. Let me know your thoughts on this couple, you guys. Like the video, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get into it. Right, y'all so ugh, ciao can i be honest uh, listen i'm gonna be honest Ooh, Girl, bye. i just hit the mic y'all i'm gonna be honest regardless i don't know why i asked y'all for permission but i'm gonna be honest regardless about what i think regarding these couples and kenneth and Brittany. i felt like they were cute like honestly i really felt like they were cute and i'm gonna say because they both had similar like backgrounds a little bit but what i do feel and this is true for a few of the couples on the show but they trauma bonded i feel like more than anything else kenneth and Brittany trauma bonded because they both bonded over loss and i feel like that was the beginning of the end because whenever you trauma bond with somebody it's not really about your connection to each other and what you like about the other person it's not really about having similar hobbies or things that you enjoy to do together it's more so about how that trauma affected your life, how much it changed your life, and how much that other person understands that part of you, which ultimately is a crutch and a hindrance for you actually doing the work to improve yourself to move on from said trauma. That's the problem with trauma bonding, but that's what I feel like they did. Brittany was talking about her mom's sister, her aunt, passing away in that tragic accident, and Kenneth was talking about his own mother, I believe, passing away at a young age and how he had to write the obituary child trust me my mom passed when I was 13 years old it's a horrifying experience you never really get over it because your mother is the foundation of your life the foundation of your existence however what I've noticed is that when I bond with people on trauma whether it's romantically or platonically it's always a situation where we're using that trauma as like a baseball and we're tossing it back and forth to each other and it's like there's always some type of emotional dumping that's going on within the relationship even if it's just friendship and that is super unhealthy I also feel like they bonded over religion and child child I don't have no problem let me I'm not gonna sit here and bash anybody's religion I don't have a problem with religion but what I do have a problem with is the fact that religion does not always equal healthy connections and long-lasting relationships because there's a lot of trash in the church okay sorry not sorry maybe I had to be the one to say it but there's a lot of trash in the church and there's a lot of illusions and delusion when it comes to religion and different aspects of religious worship because it is worship. You're worshiping something that's outside of yourself. And just because you have the same religion or just because you believe in a certain belief, whether it's Christianity, spirituality, Buddhism, whatever you have, doesn't always mean that that's going to equal you having a good relationship with another person. There's a lot of factors that go into that. And you know, Kenneth, I'm going to be honest with you. Like people may not
not like me saying this, but he was focused on in the early part of the show when the men were getting introduced to the concept and Nick Lachey and his wife, I can't remember her name, child. I always forget her name, but they came in to talk to the guys about getting started. And Kenneth was one of the first people to speak. And what I really remember was that he was talking about how young he was and that a lot of people didn't understand him wanting to go through this process being as young as he is. And he just wanted people to understand that he knew what he was doing, but it turns out he did not know what he was doing because if that man, if that man would have picked up his phone one more time, I promise you, I would have reached through the screen. If I could, if I had the power to reach through the screen and just slap that phone out his hand, I swear I would have because Jesus Christ, you, you, the last nerve was being danced upon with that man. The actual second this man got his phone back, I was like, it's over for these two. And mind you, I'm only on episode eight, so I don't even know if they're gonna like break up in these batch of episodes. But this man's in a relationship with his cell phone. It's like low key disturbing. I know they haven't had their phones for a few weeks, but he was like thrilled to get his cell phone back. And when they tell you that kids nowadays have tech neck, y'all, it's the principles too. And every time Brittany was trying to like physically connect with him on the vacation, I just cried out for her. So I was like, ooh girl, I thought you not being able to raise black kids was gonna be the problem, but he's actually the fucking dud. The way that he was just staring out into the abyss in the episode, I was like, what in the introvert fuck is this? And she was just trying so hard. It's like, oh my God, I'm a Britney fan now. And the whole episode, she's just crying out for more physical touch. They're not gonna end up together. Somewhere Kenneth is on his phone right now. And and it just, from the time he was introduced, I don't wanna make it a sexuality thing, but he was zesty. He was zesty. And I'm not trying to be funny. I, I, it might sound funny, but I'm honestly not trying to be funny. And it's not like he can't be more feminine because there's a lot of men who are heterosexual men who are more in their feminine, you know? There's pros, I feel, to that, and there can be cons to that. But there is something about Kenneth to where I don't know if it was who raised him and I don't know like what it is, but it felt more like he was in this experiment because of what he thought he should be doing in his life based on how much he's accomplished and where he wants to move forward towards. That's what it felt like. It felt like him being the principal of a middle school, him being really active in the church, him just wanting to set an example in his community. It feels like he was pulling a Jonathan Majors and looking for a Coretta that's what it looked like and I'm not saying that he was as egotistical as maybe Jonathan Majors was looking to be but it felt like he was trying to check off boxes like that's what it felt like to me and I just really didn't like it I just didn't like it and that's what I was talking about when I did the video on modern day dating if you didn't check it out where I did an analysis on love is blind season six and modern day dating and the similarities between the two so be sure to go check that out after this video video you guys but I just felt like he was not being his true and authentic self he was not being true to himself and what he really wanted like I don't think Kenneth really wanted to be married I felt like he thought that he should be married based on where he was in his life in this moment and that that never works and this is like what I want to point out to so many people watching this show is that it's been proven time and time again that if you're lying to yourself about what it is that you want or why you're in that situation why you're looking for love, why you want to be in a relationship, why you want to be married. It's going to come out. It's go it's going to come out. It's inevitable. And I, you know, I'm kind of sad for Brittany. I'm going to be honest because even when they had that discussion, when Kenneth and AD on the beach had that discussion about raising black children and whether or not Brittany would be up to the task, honestly, I feel like she would have. I feel like she would have been up to the task and I feel like she would have been a great mother to some biracial children. And I honestly, you know, I don't think Think Kenneth would have been the worst father. There have been worse fathers to biracial children, but I feel like she would have been a really mature mother. And I like the fact that she stood up for herself when she spoke to Kenneth about AD's conversation with him and wanting to make sure that it was coming from a place of authenticity and it was coming from a place of good intentions. I appreciate that she spoke up for herself in that moment because she wasn't holding any maliciousness in her heart for AD. I think 
think she was respectful and understanding of why AD would have that conversation with Kenneth. But she wanted to make sure that she made herself clear and let it be known that she has no problem with it as long as it was coming from a place of good intentions. And I love Britney for that. I think she's a beautiful person. Honestly, y'all really want to know what I think about poor little Britney, poor little Tink Tink? I feel like she got lost in the sauce of black man's vernacular, okay? What is black man's vernacular? It's when they speak and captivate and they say things and it's just the magic in their tone and the magic in their voice that never actually translates into real action, real hot girl shit. Like it never actually translates into concrete, tangible results. You get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying this is all black men, but I'm saying it's the majority and we're not gonna sit here in front on this here internet and act like it's not, okay? There's a lot of healing that needs to be done. And I think Brittany knew that the relationship wasn't gonna necessarily go the way she thought it was gonna go when they were on that boat. And this man was sitting here talking about dolphins instead of talking to his soon to be wife. I think she knew. I think she knew right then because it seemed like she was really down for him when they first met. And she was like, I'm going to stick with this because I'm in it. But when he was just not making any conversation, I think in her heart, that's when she knew. It's crazy because she started to be confirmed in her suspicions when they moved into that townhouse together. And I get it. Like, I don't want to make it seem like I don't understand Kenneth's side of the situation because when they first got into the townhouse and he was on his phone, checking emails I'm like okay you know she was kind of being a little bit attached in that moment but I think it was because of her compassion she wanted to make sure that he was feeling appreciated in that moment she wanted to make sure he felt as if she was considering him like when she was unpacking their clothes and when she was setting up the bathroom she wanted to include him and I was like okay chill out girl for a minute I was like girl chill out that man is a middle school principal he might need to check on some things and I didn't really like chew him out you know when he was first on the phone but but the fact that he just would not get off the phone, that pissed me off. That, y'all, when I tell you that pissed me off so bad, and the other part that irritated me that is synonymous in black men, which I, you know, I'm not trying to be that guy, but it is. He tried to project everything that he was doing wrong onto her as if it was her fault. Because when they brought up the discussion about him coming in at one o'clock in the morning, knowing that she had to get up at 5 a.m., and he came in and what? Woke that woman up out her sleep, child. Can y'all tell I don't like to be woken up out my sleep? How dare you wake me up out my sleep when I gotta get up and work in a few hours? Talking about now you want some affection. How selfish, how selfish are you that you would do such a thing? Like, and then when I don't respond to that and I have an issue or a slight grievance with the way you show affection, you bring that example? You bring up that example for why I shouldn't have a grievance? You just made it worse. What do you mean? What do you mean? Don't you ever wake somebody up at 1 a.m. when they got to go to work in two hours. Y'all, when I tell you, I just, I just can't. And he sat there and he told her, I don't have any problem with my fire or the burning that I feel for you. If you don't feel that for me, there's nothing I can do about that. No, sir, you're not trying. Or maybe you're immature in the way that you show emotions. I don't know what it is. But if someone who had a fire for you for weeks before they even saw your face and loved you enough to commit their life to you before they even met you. If that person had a fire for you then, but they don't now, it's because of your actions. I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it. He did not want to take accountability for his actions. And I just, you know, maybe I'm a little triggered. I've, I've said it before. This show has triggered me, but that is something that seems to be a trend within males in the black community is the disconnection with emotions and the disconnection with reality and the fact that them just being there existing is reason enough for people to move and it's not I don't understand I don't understand why while everyone else is moving through life and trying to bring value in the world that for whatever reason a majority since y'all are sensitive of black men feel that just existing is enough for people to move on their behalf and I'm here to tell you sir it is not it's not did you hear what I said it's not and I feel like that was the expectation that Kenneth had was that she was just going to sit there in all of his stew of raggedy bullshit.
and take him however he was without him putting in any effort or making any improvements. And that's just how I feel. So listen, y'all get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this couple. Let me know what you think about what I said. Cause I could be wrong. I am not opposed to being wrong. Let me know your opinion. Cause I want to hear it you guys. And be sure to like the video, be sure to subscribe and I will see you all next time. Bye.